Hey everyone, this is Tim, and I'm starting a new um, message known as Make War, message series known as Make War. I'm talking about um, different things, different uh, spirits and things that the saint, that the enemy will bring, well, Satan will bring against you and how to combat them, even um, sometimes how we can fall for them. And what we need to be on the lookout for. Alright. First one is. I'm starting off. With a. Paul opposes Cephas. This is. um. Wow. I just forgot the reference. That's embarrassing. Galatians. Four. 2, 4, verse 11. There we go. There's proof that I'm not exactly perfect, but anyways. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. With, for certain, before certain men came from James, he used to eat with Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy so that by that hypocrisy even Barnabas was led astray. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to say something that may seem a little bit shocking. I don't really think that um, the fact that they were following Jewish customs is what was problematic. I think it's more the fact that they were trying to force the Gentiles into following them. It's, this is the way you have to be or we can't affiliate with you automatically is what they're saying. And um, I wonder how many people do the same thing. Like they don't like the way someone worships or they don't like the clothes somebody's wearing. There is a very um, recognizable, distinct spirit here. It's the spirit of dissension. Now, I'm not talking about uh, speaking out against someone who um, whose teaching is against the Bible. I was going to give uh, examples of that, but once again, I'm, my own flesh can jump into that, so I'm going to kind of refrain from that. But um, you do want to test everything you hear from the Bible. But like I said, what I mean, it's more the customs you try to throw into it or you don't like. I've seen um, people complain that one person came in and they thought it was inappropriate because he looked like he came in from track practice. Well, that's because it was a Wednesday night service and the guy looked like he came for track practice because he came from track practice. I, It's um, too much. We get into a box of it has to be this way. And I wonder, are we, is that more the spirit of um, the Judaizers that Cephas is trying to... Um, a piece here. And it's things like there was one church, even um, this will even show up in the church. There was one church, the way they opened up their worship service is they would choose a random um, televangelist or another church, and they would talk about how. Um, it was almost concert-like. They had these lights going off and things. And they had the words up on the screen like they were singing karaoke. And he would literally say, And I thought to myself, 
where is the worship in that? Well, I have a question for you. Where in the Bible does it say that you are the judge of what is and what isn't worship? It's a very easy trap to watch into. And that is what I'm actually thinking about. Um, Paul is winds up speaking out against in later in the um, serve. Later in the chapter, when he starts saying there's no Jew or Gentile and things, most new, no Jew, no Gentile, no slave, n nor free, it's um, most people are saying that, think that it's talking specifically about the law. There are certain, maybe, yes, that argument does have merit, but I think it's more about the spirit of my way is better. It has to be my way. And there's a line that um, I like from Casting Crown Song. It says, Jesus is the only way to heaven, but we are not the only way to Jesus. And I th think it's more that. And um, it's... um. We have to be careful not to insert ourselves into the gospel. On top of that, I have also um, seen it reversed. There seems to be a very specific, I don't want to say attack, but um, blame against Torah-following Christians. The Hebrew roots and Masonic crowds, more likely. I've heard them Yes, my both my hands are on this. I've um, made this mistake myself. So yes, this part is just as much to me as it is to everyone else. But there's a few things I need to um, suggest first. Because before you go accusing them of being Judaizers, my first thing is you might want to make take a look at yourself. Is it them that are being Judaizers, or is it you, with your own idea of what a Christian is, trying to change them? You know, how sometimes they don't eat pork, or they go to church on Saturday, or them, which is Shabbat, or Sabbath, whichever one you want to call it. And is it Actually, does it hold merit that that is wrong, or is it your own head? And then there's a group where um, there's also this group that are against them because something happened to them. Which brings me to my second opinion. Yes, there are groups of Masonics and Hebrew roots who are Judaizers, just like every other um denomination has those and things, but there's a certain trap you need to watch out for. It's four words long. It's the most annoying um, sentence in the Hebrew, he, English language, which apparently I can't speak, but um, it's simply, they're all like that. Obviously, um, that's not right. You'll hear it um, with women that's been hurt by men, men that's been hurt by women. Or I've even seen non-believers talk about that with churches. We have to be careful not to use that same thing with um, our Hebrew roots, brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are my brother. Or sister, whether or not you eat pork, whether or not what church, what day you go to church on, or um, how you dress or your music does not list, matter to me. That's just a few things to think about. I'll see you next week. Bye.